Okay, welcome to chapter six. In this module, we're going to be discussing the analysis of data. Uh, you're going to have two different instructor videos to watch, both of which will cover uh, how the analysis and the uh, process of a research project works. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, talking about qualitative data analysis. This is an approach where you are, uh, you're going about it inductively, meaning you're taking a larger view of a situation and you are looking for patterns that come about through your observation of that larger view. Whereas quantitative is deductive, it's more linear, but qualitative for right now. Okay. So the general process is you have specific observations that you have made. By this I mean the observations you have conducted, interviews that you have conducted, surveys perhaps that you have administered, and you're looking at them and you're looking for particular patterns that occur throughout the uh, collection of your data. Uh, going and developing a plausible explanation for why this happens, and then developing a general conclusion. Now, this is a good uh, point right here. This can be a potentially overwhelming task. You have a lot of data, so oh my gosh, what do you go and do with it? We're going to talk about this in the next section. It's not actually as overwhelming as you might think. The only thing it requires is some organization and a very clear purpose going into it. Okay? So your goal in qualitative data analysis is to reduce the volume of information collected. When we go to look at the analysis portion of this, you will have an interview transcript, using an interview as an example. Your interview transcript will probably be uh, several pages long. Now, it would not be reasonable to think that that entire transcript is going to be what you will be uh, analyzing. Instead, you're going to extract certain parts of it. So there are techniques to go and pare down the information that you have so that you can extract the relevant data you need from it in order to conduct an analysis. Okay? All right. You must rely on a coding scheme for grouping data into categories of similar information. And we will talk about that more in the next section. But let's, let's just put it this way. If you, have, uh, if you have gone and conducted an interview and you have asked certain kinds of questions, people are going to answer in certain ways. And they will bring up certain issues or certain topics within their answers. You, what you'll be doing is going and uh, categorizing those different topics together. But more about that. That will be in the next video. So uh, what, it, what this will require you to do with qualitative uh, data analysis is you have to become very, very familiar with the data that you have collected. It's not something that you can just look at once or twice and think that you've got it. It requires immersion. Okay? So reduce the amount of data, uh, narrative data through the use of a coding scheme. Again, we'll talk about that more in just a little bit. And your chapter also covers this as well. Describe the main characteristics of the categories. We'll talk about this in terms of membership categorization. There's more to come on that. And then interpret what has been simplified and organize it. Okay? All right, now, another thing is you engage in introspection. Okay? You want to go and uh, look at this in a way that helps you you know, look at it as objectively as possible from a, a detached perspective so that you're, so, you know, you're not looking at it in a way that is overly emotional. It's more of an analytical process. Okay? There's a software that is available. Now, sometimes when people think software, they think, okay, this is going to be a tool to make the whole process efficient. Technically, it can, and at the same time, it also can't. Because of the way qualitative data works, there are software programs available. Unfortunately, the learning curve for them can be kind of steep, and you have to have a project or two under your belt. So what I'll suggest to you for this particular research project is that you plan on doing this the old-fashioned way, where you'll have index cards, uh, glue sticks, etc. We'll talk more about that later. Okay? Now, the software can go and help organize the data. That is an advantage, but for the scale of the project you're doing right now, I wouldn't recommend any software. 
Now, when you go on to grad school, if you want to get into qualitative uh, research, absolutely go for it. The sky's the limit. But for right now, it's, it's best just to stick with a, a basic approach to this. So quantitative data analysis. Here you're talking about a more of a linear deductive approach. The two, they do overlap somewhat in that you are trying to investigate something. The difference is in the way that you look at it, the perspective that you take. Here you are, have identified a topic. You've, you've uh, you know, written a problem statement. You are focusing your research to either prove or disprove your hypothesis. Okay. Now, like I say, qualitative research is broad enough to be able to encompass quantitative as well. So, you know, uh, one thing that the author makes a good point of, and I hope you've also looked at some of the online resources in the text, is that um, you know you you play to your strengths, and that's a very good point. If you consider yourself to be more of an inductive person. Uh, you know, where qualitative data analysis is what you want to do, great. If you enjoy working with statistics, if you like the idea of mean, median, and mode, and you're very comfortable working with that, and it fits into your research plan, then by all means, play to your strengths, okay? So how do you go and you uh, represent these different you know, the different ways that you have, uh, you know, you've collected the data, you've analyzed it, how do you represent the results? You have a couple of different approaches here. Uh, you have descript descriptive statistics and also inferential statistics. Now, these, uh, the, your use of these will differ depending on uh, the particular, um, you know, way that you're going to report the data. So, be sure that you're using the right one. All right, so, with descriptive statistics, you're talking about what kind of measures do you have? And I just mentioned mean, median, and mode. Okay? When you go and you represent the data that you have collected and your analysis of it, be sure that you are, uh, are representing it in the right category because you're wanting people to be able to develop a mental picture, so to speak, of how this has uh, performed. You know, whether it's a teaching strategy or an assessment strategy, how effective was the assessment, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Also, a uh, measure of dispersion. Okay? How, do you, how do you go and, and uh, state what is normative, you know, what, what is a particular range, and then what is atypical? So, again, when you go to represent this, if you take a quantitative approach to this, Make sure you uh, incorporate the right terms and the right approaches to the statistics. Okay. So some general rules of thumb. When you have qualitative data that you are going to present, uh, you, you try to be as impartial as possible. And I'm going to just highlight this right here. This is very necessary. Now, if you go and you look at the qualitative paradigm, it also says that, and, and it asserts that, we cannot be impartial because we consider ourselves a part of the research setting in some small way. What you can do is just be very upfront, almost issue a disclaimer to that effect so that the people reading your case study will know exactly where you are coming from. Okay? Include references to yourself where warranted. Okay? This is another good uh, point because one of the one of the parts of qualitative data analysis and reporting is interpretation. You know, it's the hermeneutical uh, dimension of this. Be honest and upfront. That's the biggest thing that I can suggest right there, um, because you'll people will be able to sort of form their own sieve to to you know be able to better understand not only the setting that you are uh, looking at, but also your uh, your particular take on it or where your particular take may have, you know, um, gone this way when maybe they would have gone this way. You know, it's, it's all about uh, better understanding. Okay. You're wanting to take readers along on your journey. This is where the narrative part of your case study comes in. You know, you are, you are pulling together quotes that people have uh, said through interviews observations that you have made and you're you're really developing a larger kind of a narrative 
we'll get to that more uh, later. That's also in uh, the writing the report module, which is the one right after this. Okay, so reporting results of quantitative data analysis. Uh, the thing that I'll suggest here is if you're going to, if you have done a quantitative approach to this, make sure that you follow the APA manual. It has a complete list of how you report every kind of statistic, how you do a chart, uh, how it is either descending or ascending, etc. So pay very close attention to that. Because also, if you take this into your culminating project, a quantitative uh, approach, you know, you'll need to make sure that you've got the formulas right. So it's on the other side of referencing. Okay. All right, well, that's it for Chapter 6. Uh, be sure to watch the next uh, video, which is also about the analysis of data. We take that more from a qualitative perspective, and we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.